Fest Radio on RapFestRadio.com. We're, we're not number one. God is. God is. We may not be the best, but our purpose, purpose is to lead you to the best. Jesus Christ. Christ. www.RapFestRadio.com. Old school to new school. Classics to exclusives. Gospel, hip-hop, music, and videos. Live video interviews Monday nights at 8 p.m. Monday nights at 8 p.m. Watch. 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 Learn. 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 Love. Love. Support. Support. <laughs> Rap Fest Radio on RapFestRadio.com. 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 Summer, winter, spring, and fall, I do believe you carry me through it all. From here to overseas I guess now the saints are mocking But we don't need Drew Brees I put my money in kingdom Then vacate in Malibu I spent so much green this year That my green is now turning blue Never trusting your status Cause you one day away From yellow tape and them sirens Police saying stay away I'm a little day away Try my best not to sin Covered up all in this grace Can you cover my friends? Can you cover my ends? Or will all that depend On my comments of what I think about feminine men I'ma leave that for another date Another meal for another plate I'ma keep it going at any rate I'ma put the boots on another snake Okay, now my city is God City And God City is Dell City If you ain't living in God City Then you off living in Hell City How you take a city back? Go back to the world with God at the head And bring life back to this city Resurrected yeah. from the dead You got it Summer, winter, spring and fall I do believe You carry me Jones here at RapFest Radio, RapFestRadio.com. Welcome once again to another episode. We're excited. We got a full house here. We have Sippy Soul in the house and also YP is going to be coming mm -hmm. up later on. Uh, we have a lot to talk about today. 
you know what? I'm just going to start off with some announcements. We're, we're just excited. Um, as you guys know, Rap Fest is coming up. Artists, if you're out there and you want to be a part of Rap Fest, there's a whole submission process still. Same thing we've been doing for the last 20 years. So just go to rapfestinc.com. That's rapfestinc.com. And click on the link. You'll see all the details. as a PDF file with all the instructions what to do. Or if you already know what to do, just hit us up. Send it to us at rapfestinc at gmail.com. Make sure you have all the information. We will not look at incomplete submissions. So make sure you send a full submission. Three songs, bio, the whole thing. It's on the site. So go to rapfestinc.com. Get all of those details. Also, as we've been talking about for this year's Rap Fest, we're excited. We have the legendary hip-hop DJ, DJ Breakbeat Lou, is going to be spinning at Rap Fest. Right. If you all know hip-hop, you all know Breakbeat Lou. Everybody has those ultimate Breakbeats CDs in their houses. Breakbeat Lou in the building. <laughs> He's the one that put those things together for you DJs. Uh, great brother, uh, loves the Lord, and we're just excited to have him out there with us this year. Uh, he's gonna be spending his 45s. He don't do 12 inch, he don't do Serato. He spins 45s exclusively, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. Also, the artwork for the flyer is being worked on. Uh, Eric Orr is working on the flyer. I think you guys are gonna love what we're doing. I won't tell you what it is until you, you know we get at least a draft of, of the flyer, and when we do, we'll post it. And we have some other good news, man. You know, Rap Fest, born and raised in the Bronx. We've done a lot of ministry in the streets. One of the things that we love to do is, you know, authentic street ministry, mm -hmm. where you really get to go one-on-one -on -one with people. Rap Fest, it's a little difficult to do that because it's a big stage and so many people, you don't get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. But we're excited because we have a ministry coming in to do that one-on-one -on -one ministry, even from the stage. And it's a ministry dear to my heart called The Storyteller is coming back out. Yes, yeah, Storytellers originated at Crossroads Tabernacle with Pastor Joseph Cortese. And we're excited to say we have the original four storytellers rapping. That'll be myself, Brother E, Eric E, and the Lord's Ambassador. That's right, the Lord's Ambassador. Uh, Y'all don't know, man. To get the Lord's ambassador out here, that alone is worth it. I, they're like, what song is he doing, Bert? I said, I'm just standing on stage watching. I'm going to be like, I love those guys, man. Uh, but it's, it's been a long time coming. Everybody's been asking for it. And especially in the Bronx, we, we you know, street ministry is what we do. So I'm excited. I'm, I'm hoping that we have, you know, strengthened us to do it. You know, it's been a while. It's been a long time. Uh, the band, Ellie and the guys from Harvest are going to be playing in the band. Pastor Joe can't be there for the event, but, you know, naturally we have his blessings as the head of Storytellers. So look out for Storytellers at Rap Fest 2014. It's going to be crazy. We're bringing back all the old songs and, you know, that are, that are still relevant street ministry songs. So we're really excited about it with a full live band on stage at Rap Fest. So go ahead, tweet your friends and let them know Rap Fest 2014 featuring the storytellers. That's with an A S F P and not E R S. Uh, so we're excited. I know I'm excited. Yeah. I, I can talk about that all day, and you'll just be not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. Um, so you know what? Introduce yourself to the people. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my name is Rohia Tusibi, um, also known as CB Soul. Um, I am first and foremost a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, after that, I also express myself in various artistic ways, um, one being dance. I have an undergraduate degree in dance. Um, also, I write. And so um, I'm excited to be here today. I'm a part of the Rock Brooklyn Ministries. And Man. so that's how I know you, through my pastor. Right, we had Pastor Louis Straker right here mm -hmm. uh, a couple of shows back, mm -hmm. and it was a, a great interview, and he told us about you. Mm -hmm. And I trusted him. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, you got to get CB up here. She, <laughs> yo, she's she's black. She'll just come up and do stuff. And he was talking. I said, okay, we need to meet this, this lady. So tell us, you say you do various ministries, mm -hmm. uh, dance. You're, you, you have a, a degree in dance? Yes, I do. I have a um, bachelor's in dance. I went to Howard University. Nice. Mm -hmm. And you said you also write. What do you yes. write? I write poetry. I also write rhymes. So, yes. Wow. <laughs> this might be our first dancing on Rap Fest Radio. <laughs> I'm going to have to move this stuff out the way. We already had the painter. We had Robert Corso come. We did a whole paint oh, nice. thing here to some worship music. So um, so how did you get How did you get started with your whole dance stuff? Well, um, I would say uh, I always was a dancer. I liked to move. Um, my roots are in West African dance, though. And um, I actually started dance, taking dance seriously in church. 
Um, mm -hmm. I was about 12 years old and um, a friend had invited me to a youth ministry. I saw a dancer and I was like, wow, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's how I started taking it seriously. And then after that, I enrolled in classes. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, do, I don't think I know. Any, oh, I probably do know people with reason dancing. <laughs> Never really spoke to them like that, you know, and to think that you got inspired by someone in church through mm -hmm. the dance. Now, when you saw this person in church mm -hmm. through the dance, were you already a born again Christian or were you just a Good visitor? Question. Good question. Um, I would say that my mom did explain the gospel to me when I was about before that event in our home, in our kitchen. So I knew about salvation. I would say, though, after that time, I got locked in a little bit more. So, yeah. I would say, you know, I think when you're a teenager, you kind of, it's, it's hard to find a lot of teenagers that are hardcore for the Lord at young, young ages. Right. So you're raised in church or you're raised around the things of God and you have exposure to it, but then you still have to make that decision. Yeah, so. I think teenagers nowadays are cut from a different cloth because yeah. I know back in the days we had teenage youth revivals yeah. and they were like insane. That's now you go to church and they're like, yourself. Right. Looking at their phones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I don't know how many people saw my, my, my Instagram this week. Uh, me and my pastor, we were talking. It's like, yo, I got I got a post for Sunday. Mm -hmm. So when you go up to preach, I'm going to post something on Instagram. Okay. And you know how they do that. This could be us things. You know, this could be us, but this. This could be us, but that. So mm -hmm. I had a picture of a bunch of people worshiping. Yeah. said, this could be us, but y'all checking your Instagram. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. I got a lot of re retweets on that. So people still checking their Instagram. They don't care. They just, they just post it anyway. People write in my own church with like, reposted it. But I thought it was kind of cool. But um, so your your dance ministry, as as it's developing, like how, how are you planning on using that as a ministry? Mm, good question. Well, um, I'm involved in a dance ministry at our church. I'm um, led by Sister Elise Morris. She's awesome as well, also a professional dancer. But um, my desire is to reach, to use dance more evangelistically, particularly within the dance community. Um, I think it's the same within hip hop, any type of art, art form. You have to have someone who has a background in that art to reach people who are in that art. So my heart is for um, dancers, non-dancers, to be touched by art that's made for God. So you said, um within the dance community. I know when we talk hip hop, we say the hip hop community, everybody starts thinking of the whole, the Jay-Z, the 50, uh -huh. or the old school rappers right. or whatever. What's the dance community? Good Define question. that. That's three good questions in a row. I hope you're paying attention. <laughs> so I would say the dance community is comprised of people who have degrees in dance, people who've been dancing and training since they're young, um, modern dancers, you could think of like an Ailey, Alvin Ailey type mm -hmm. company. It could also be um, people who are in more like underground um, type companies that don't get as much uh, stage play. So there could be West African Dance Company, it could be Breakers, it could be um, jazz dancers, street dancers, all these different types of things. But there is a community and um, you, you know when you're in it, you're always taking classes together. Um, you eat, breathe, live, dance. Like you'll spend your last dollar on mm. a class. Now I've been delivered from that, <laughs> <laughs> but you know that used to be my lifestyle. It's like okay, I have ten dollars left. I'm going to class, or you know, I'm going to uh, make sure that I'm in this performance or that I go see this performance because I want to grow in the language of movement as a form of communication. Nice, well rehearsed. You, you treat her. <laughs> you taught her well. You taught her well, Pastor Lou. No, great answers. I mean, you said I got good questions. I got to say you got great answers. So, Thank you. you know, we got to compliment each Thank other. Thank you very here. much. Uh, so within the dance community, mm -hmm. uh, we happen we know a couple of the Alvin Ailey dancers, mm -hmm. and they work with us with storytellers. Okay. Naturally, mm -hmm. Rap Fest is not a place you want the Alvin Ailey dance. It just doesn't fit, I guess. <laughs> but um, they, you know, they love the Lord. Mm -hmm. They worship. They're part of the ministries mm -hmm. at the church. But you mentioned you wanted to reach the dance community. Mm -hmm. Is what's going on within the dance community that you feel that urgency mm. or that desire to reach out to them? Well, I think for one, with any any art form, anything in particular, what you love can become an idol. Okay. So I think particularly in the arts, um, people can believe that art is their calling, even Christians, mm -hmm. as opposed to serving the Lord. That's your calling. Now you do it in different ways. You can do that as a dancer, you can do that as an MC. you can do that, but whatever you do, your call is to make disciples. So um, my desire 
is to reach people and have them understand, because this is my story, that being a dancer is not your purpose in life. Your purpose in life is serving the Lord Jesus. And you can do that any way you want to. You can do that through dance. Amen. Have you had the opportunity to reach out to some of the dancers around you and, and minister to them? Like, what's been their response? I have. I've been able to, to talk to friends who are in the community. And it's hard to hear that. It's hard because I think that the arts are spiritualized a lot. Like, there's other careers. You could be a lawyer. You're like, okay, that's my job. Like, you don't hear lawyers going around saying, this is my calling, this is my purpose. You may hear some, like maybe if they're doing community work, but there's something different when it comes to art. People attach calling, spirituality, purpose to that. So um, they hear me sometimes. I think what speaks more is the work though. So when you perform, mm -hmm. how do you know what piece to perform where in order to impact your audience? Mm -hmm. Like a, a rapper will mm -hmm. take, you know, they have a theme in mind right mm -hmm. away. You're not gonna write about this this is what's going on now mm -hmm. writing about oh this is my experience mm -hmm. like how do you translate that into mm -hmm. dance mm -hmm. how much of it is the actual dance how much of it is the music you're dancing to good question well i think as a <laughs> i think i could i could respond to you um from from a creating from a creating standpoint so as a choreographer i am inspired by music um sometimes i'm just inspired by themes and i think that's the same thing the same that impacts me when I'm writing is just things. Maybe I'll see something recurring in life where I'm encountering different things. And I'm like, okay, I think I want to create a dance based on that. So it's similar. Okay, staying on similarities, mm -hmm. let's say a, a rapper mm -hmm. that a lyricist could write stuff but mm -hmm. doesn't have access to music, has to find a producer to create tracks, mm -hmm. choreographer. Mm -hmm. How do you select, how do you go to the music selection? Because mm -hmm what you want to dance about mm -hmm. may not be a song about it already right. so as as opposed to the rapper where we're adding the lyrics to the beat and making it that song mm -hmm. you know you have to find a finished product i honestly haven't encountered not being able to find music there's a there's so much music out there i think um, I sometimes get, I get overwhelmed by how much music there's out there. I'm like, wow, I want to make something you, of this. I want to do as something As long as I, I don't do find you this. dancing to happy, I'm good. Well, wait a minute. I like that song. <laughs> I, I, I like it. I like it. I like it. It's a nice I like song. It's, it's a nice song. It's, 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 it's a place for it. <laughs> yeah, keep it out of the church. My ass I should, I mean, there's nothing, there's no value to it yeah, for the well, church. I mean, I mean, he's not a Christian. Right. So. I mean, that that's evident in mm -hmm. the in the song itself, but I'm saying is why bring it into the church? Yeah, I understand. You know, mm -hmm. I saw a video of these two ladies in the church having church with that song. I was like, really? Having church as in like, like going dancing in, dancing and worshiping to oh, that song, okay, and that's what you. I'm saying. Yeah, no place for that. Understood. You know? So I'm just saying. You see, even even in hip hop, I hip hop has. Oh, the song! It's a great song. Every mm -hmm. it's a great song. If you happy song. if you at a party and you want a happy song, you just listen to music. But you know, I think there's still a a, a level of reverence and respect within the church mm -hmm. that has to be acknowledged and respected mm -hmm. from all genres, right. whether it be hip hop, dance, jazz, soul, mm -hmm. poetry, whatever it is. Right. You know, I think we, the Christian community, have become so tolerant or so. Uh, so captivated by relevancy like mm -hmm. we want to be so relevant we'll take whatever they have and just use it for the lord hallelujah hallelujah happy mm -hmm. like you know yeah. i think we can do that better than that our, our i think we can do better than that mm -hmm. no offense i know it's a great song no it is it's, but i understand it's, it's a great song about. i mean hello he, he they won like 16 grammys for it that's what it seemed like right or 16 right. awards he was winning a bunch of stuff so uh but everything has its place very true so tell us a little bit more about yourself when okay. when do you accept the realization that God is real. Mm -hmm. You said it was in your teenage mm -hmm. years, but what was it? What I mean, besides the dance, right? Because the dance, I'm sure, was great. Mm -hmm. But in your own personal life, well, I was burdened with guilt as a youth. I knew that I did things that, first of all, my parents weren't pleased with, and um, at the time, I, I'm from. I'm originally from Maryland, but my family moved to Phoenix, Arizona, and that's when my mom had an encounter with the Lord. And she started going to seminary. And um, so she, we, my brothers and I would go to classes with her. We were in Greek and Hebrew classes with her. Right. We had our Tupperware dishes, eating our dinner, like, why are we here? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, but she made it a point. I, I, one day, like I said, I was in the kitchen, and I was just like, 
I started confessing all these sins to my mom and I was like mm. weeping and she explained the gospel of salvation to me. She explained that Jesus had died for my sins and I was guilt free. And I'm telling you, immediately, I just felt this burden lift off of my chest. And of course, that night, we had to go to one of her classes. Um, uh, and I think it was, one of her Hebrew scholars, I think, was teaching. And um, But it was in a setting of a church service. I was so free. I got up. I started dancing all over the place because I understood that I was forgiven. Nice. So I got saved in the kitchen when I was about 12. Wow, Saved in the Kitchen. <laughs> that sounds like the title of a book. <laughs> saved in the Kitchen. Saved in the Kitchen. <laughs> For real. In Phoenix, like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Medea, call this lady. <laughs> That's a movie right there. If I ain't heard one, man. I, really I want rights. I want, I like I want my credits for that. <laughs> I like Tyler Perry. That's okay. I said Medea. Okay, that's right. That's right. Different. Two different. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Two different people. Oh yeah. Two totally different people. That's true. (laughs) Uh, What I wanted. I know. I know you do poetry and and rhyme and stuff like that. And I am gonna play a video clip of a worship dance, which I'll let you explain after Mm -hmm. after what I ask you. Mm -hmm. I want to know if you have a a poem or something that you would be able to share with us right now. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Mm, let me see what I want to do. Okay. I'm going to do a poem. All right. The word of the Lord is perfect, it's pure, it's clean and it's sure. So surely believe and no longer ignore that Christ will return and his kingdom restore. But not in buildings that are open with doors, but earthlings not worthy, deserving, or more than the dust from which we were formed but whom he foreknew to be born anew, or from above so his love never stops singing of. Old ways covered in mercy, most days panting, I'm thirsty for more of his presence. Fill my cup to the brim, incomparable pleasures. Saints, be satisfied in him. For for he chose us when we were groping in the dark. His veins did bust, hoping that our hearts would turn to him away from sin, our old slave master. So unlock your destiny. See, he's the master who brought us near when we were far like magnets to metal. So for the call, forsake all. Put your foot to the pedal. No turning back now, hand to the plow, for the way is more narrow than the birth canal. All the while, some attempt to enter his gates with any lifestyle. Our only occupation, pointing serfs to the king, a called out holy nation, serving the king. So let's proclaim with our lives that we've been redeemed until all hear the call, let freedom ring. Nice. CB Soul, so <laughs> you working on the album, putting stuff together, or is um, that still very premature? It's, it, I just create as I go, so possibly. All right. All, right. <laughs> All right, so tell us about this dance we're about to see here. Okay, so this was um, filmed in Brooklyn, Eastern Parkway. Um, it was just, I was actually just inspired by the music. Okay. So I just went with it. And the song? It's um, Psalm 136 by Jazz Knight. And the dancers, are, you're not dancing in this. You just choreograph this exactly. piece. Exactly, yes. Well, again, I want to thank you for stopping by yeah. Rap Fest Radio. All we right. just pray that the Lord will continue opening doors for you. Thank and, you. you know, when you have music mm-hmm. or poetry recorded or something, yes. shoot it our way so we can, you know, let people hear it. Thank you for that. And when you me. see Rob Monroe, yes. just elbow him in the head. Show me one time. Well, he's lightly, so I'll, lightly. I'll, I'll touch him on the show. Lightly. Lightly. <laughs> Lightly and then run. Yeah. No, for sure, man. Shout out to you know the Rock Brooklyn. Yeah. Make sure you check them out as well. Pastor Louis Straker and all the staff out there. Thank you so much for your support. And check out this worship dance here, choreographed by CB Soul. I love the name. That's like CB Soul. <laughs> yeah, you got you got to say it like that. You can't just say CB Soul. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> all right, check it out. And we're gonna come back after this with YP in the building. Mercy endures and how you wrap around me and keep me safe. 
safe through the worst of the storm How you help me out when I wouldn't help myself there So through this rhyme, I hope I'm making myself clear I just wanna take time to appreciate The way you abbreviated my problems when I couldn't seize the way Bless me with peace and grace Now every time I hit my knees to pray It's almost like I can see the gates So even when the enemy taunts, this is turbulence you Give me assurance in Psalms 136 My heart was wicked until you started turning it now Hell is not an option, so I'm not concerned with it There's no alternative And that's why you'll catch a fire burning inside While the spirit's confirming it Cause your God been endured forever I give thanks to the God who's rubbing doors forever And that's you We are back here, RapFest Radio, RapFestRadio.com. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Uh, we just finished a nice interview with Sibby Soul, and that was a dance you saw that she choreographed. Make sure you connect with her. The Facebook information has been up all night, so you can check that out. We have YP in the building. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, I do want to thank our sponsors, Grateful Apparel, GratefulApparel.com. Make sure you go to their website, click buy on everything that's there, put in your cart, and enjoy, you know, look fresh in the streets. Uh, shout out to Ray and all the people out there, Grateful Apparel. Also, HolyCulture.net, the sponsors our podcast and puts it up on iTunes on the Holy Culture Radio Network. Make sure you check them out. That's HolyCulture.net. They have a lot of downloads, music, free stuff, videos, stories, interviews, re reviews. Everything is there. Uh, PureStream.tv, supplying the stream for this. You make sure you go to PureStream.tv if you want to stream your event, your podcast, your church services. They have reasonable prices, good packages for your ministries as well. Also, BX Records, that's rocking our audio podcast on their station as well. If you're listening to us on BX Records, God bless you and thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit us up at, on Twitter, at Rapfest Radio. And if you have any questions for us, uh, well, I'm, I'm actually, I'll be honest, I'm not going to look for the questions anyway. So don't send me any questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just being real. So if you have any questions, send them to at Rapfest Radio. Who's going to look for that? Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's why we took the chat room down, man. Because sometimes, sometimes they would ask questions, and we would spend so much time on the questions. And I'm like, yo, I want to talk to the brother that's right here. No, I mean, sorry, no offense to my listeners. We love you guys, man. Um, so there's no more chat room. There's no more chat room, but you could always send us questions. We'll, we'll forward the questions to YP or whoever it is. Uh, we're Rapfest Radio at Rapfest Radio or hashtag Rapfest Radio Live. What's up, man? What's going on? You good? Good, good, we're done. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> that was the quickest interview. That's it. Yo, go ahead. Introduce yourself. I know we, a lot of people know you. Some people don't. Yeah, so. yeah. All right, yeah. YP, a.k.a. Young Paul. Straight out of Jersey, Hudson County, 201. You already know. And I'm here. 
I love you know what I love already already <laughs> YP aka Young Paul and usually it'd be like Young Paul aka YP you know like you bring it short you go from the short to long that's it that's it you just trying I want to I want to abandon the young not because of because a lot of rappers use the name Young something or whatever so that's why I, I incorporated YP so what are we gonna do what's next if you don't use Young just it'll be YP just YP yeah eventually and I tell you, I tell you what does that stand for just YP. <laughs> just YP. Don't, don't worry about you, it. What, is, what does it mean to you, man? <laughs> whatever, yeah, yeah, whatever it means to you. I don't know if that's good. As, long as, say, as long as it's good. Exactly. It means exactly. You. Yo, so you have uh, the proclamation mixtape and stuff yes, out. Tell us about that project, man. Yeah, man. Um, it's hosted by the homie DJ Wado. Um, the way that project came about was, as far as like like the content and stuff like that. I, Whatever. Like how it was birthed, everything. Um, and that mixtape, like I was very like, some people call call it theological in that mixtape or whatnot. Um, like it was it was a balance with like theology and like street evangelism. Um, and the reason why there was so much theology in the mixtape was because for that year, um, you know, the Lord just had me like teaching Bible studies on Tuesdays and on Sundays. So I was doing like a lot of studying. Um, just studying scripture, studying the history of what I'm reading, the audience that, you know, let's say I'm reading, I'm studying the book of James, you know, the audience James was talking to, and just stuff like that. So, in my writing process, um, you know, my heart was burning for, like, new believers, you know what I mean? Like, just new people coming in, and so I wanted to incorporate that in my music, but in a way where it didn't go over anyone's head, but at the same time, um, edif you know, edify. Kind of like a discipleship program. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, uh, what church is that that you you attend? Um, well, now we go. I go to Grace Redeemer, but at that time, it was out of my house. It was in the living room. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So. Nice. It was. It was. It was interesting. <laughs> so you have a lot of people featured on this project, right? That have been working with you, producing the stuff. Like, yeah. Give us some of the names of, of who's on this with yeah, you. Yeah, I got uh, Wit on there from Collision Records. Shout out to Wit. Um, my boys Wanda, Janeiro, and Janeiro Ortiz. Um, who else I got on there? Righteous Knight produced a couple records. Uh, yeah, so he produced about three joints. Whit produced one. Wander, my boy Wander produced uh, two of them. Um, okay. One with Janeiro. So, yeah. And the and the title, the proclamation. What does that come from? So just that, just declaring, you know, true freedom. So it's like a declaration. So we're declaring true freedom is only found in Jesus. Um, you know, true freedom. I actually have it tatted on my arm, True Freedom. Nice. <laughs> um, the reason why, um, you know, I came up with that name was because, it's, you know, just with the like, True Freedom, like the proclamation, was because a lot of people, you know, they, they claim to be free. Whether, right. you know, let's say somebody comes out of prison. You know, I had a lot of my boys, when they come out of jail, be like, yo, I'm free, I'm good. But in reality, they're still spiritually in prison. Right. And so I, I always, you know, I deal with a lot of guys coming in and out of jail. A lot, of, a lot of times, my dudes, when they get locked up, I'm the first one they call, I'm the first one they write to. And so, um, I was like, man, let me, let me present the, the true definition, the true meaning of freedom. I mean, it isn't just when you come out of jail, um, there's so much work that needs to be done, your soul needs to be set free. Or even, um, you know, let's say somebody, um, you know, let's say they lost a lot of weight, you know what I mean? Somebody who was extremely overweight and they just lost a lot of weight, they feel like that's life. Like now they're free, and in reality they're still held captive spiritually. Mm. And so I hear just or somebody who makes a lot of money. Let's say they get um, promoted in a job, and they feel like you know I've done it. This is it for me. This is this is freedom for me. I'm, right, right. You know, but really, okay, yeah, financially you feel like you've been set free, but you're still captivated. Your soul is still in bondage. You're still mm. slave to sin. You know what I mean? Nice. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, you mentioned uh, street ministry and theology yeah. mixed. How how do you make a balance of mm -hmm. theology for the for the unbeliever that probably knows nothing yeah. of scripture? Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, that's why there's a nice balance on the mixtape because you know what it is too. The reason why, if I could just be completely honest, the reason why I started a church out of my out of my living room was because I don't feel like theology was preached enough. I mean, I taught enough. I, mean, I don't believe, especially in our area. There's just not a lot of churches that teach theology. Um, and so I had a burden in my heart to talk about the preeminence of Christ, to talk about, um, 
you, you know, salvation in its proper context um, and stuff like that. So, you know, I felt a heavy burden in my heart. So, so I'm, I got guys, so people feel like, yo, how you gonna teach theology to dudes in the streets? Nah, listen, 90% of the people in my congregation, in, in our church, in my living room, were guys who were gang banging, you know, drug dealers, um, dudes fresh out of prison, sitting there loving theology, loving being taught the meat of the word, you know what I mean? Getting the gist right. of what's being said. And I saw that, you know, there was a lack of that in our area. And so, people would be surprised. People want to learn scripture. They want to know what this is about, you know what I mean? Right, right. Um, so what, so kind of, what kind of background do you have in theology, like, you know, that would empower you to, mm -hmm. to basically to teach it? Yeah, what do you mean, like, well, I believe in Reformed theology. No, yeah. but I'm saying, like, your own personal uh, study of, of scripture. Okay. Like, did you take classes? Did oh, you, okay. You know. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, what's funny is I never took any seminary courses. <laughs> Honestly, I just did a lot of studying on my own time. Like, I would listen to sermons um, for hours throughout the day, just listen to a lot of sermons, and obviously in my own time, just read scripture on my own and just take a lot of notes. Like, I have notebooks. I um, remember my wife was cleaning the house the other day, and it was encouraging to see. Mm -hmm. It's almost like it was Holy Spirit driven, because I would never want to do stuff like that. It was just the mm -hmm. Lord. I'm looking, and I got just note notebooks from front to back, just jotted down with just notes. Mm -hmm. just, yeah. And what I'm gonna say, please yeah. don't be offended. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> Wait, what are you gonna say? No, <laughs> <laughs> Take that back. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's great that you have a love for theology. Yeah. Because that's great for foundational purposes of our beliefs. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. But it enhances your ability to teach it when you study it properly. Mm hmm And when I mean mm. study it properly, is get schooled. Right. Because sometimes your own interpretation isn't what it is mm -hmm. okay so it's important that we get schooled properly by it because theology is very difficult to teach very difficult to learn very difficult to grasp i mean you have you have stuff in there that is very difficult to explain to the lame man you know so you have to be able to completely have a grasp of it and a study of it not from someone's sermon but from Digging in yourself, and it was interesting you said that you studied in the Word. And, exactly. And you wrote, but I, I would encourage you, since you have such a desire for mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. that you get school by it. Because it will enhance your ministry tremendously. I agree. So I encourage yeah. you to, to, to strive for that. Because if you have a love, not many people have a love for it. A lot of people just want to stay on the basics of what Christianity is exactly. and their beliefs, and they don't want to dig into the meat and bone of the scripture and take out the history and take out the Hebrew meaning and take out the Greek meaning to verses in the Bible that bring a totally different right. light to what your the normal person would be reading. Right. So I do encourage you to get schooled in the Hebrew and the Greek so that Absolutely. you can just dig into the word and it'll just bring what you're doing now to a totally different level. And I encourage, I really, really discourage people to teach theology from self-taught methods because it could bring confusion if you're not grounded foundationally properly, it'll just bring confusion. Well, I'll say, I'll say this, like, I've never taught anything, I, I mean, this is the thing, like, a lot of the people I'm listening to, you gotta say, these are Bible teachers, so they're teaching. And so I go in specifically on listening to teachings Maybe from John Piper, R.C. Sproul. And so it's like taking seminary courses, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm sitting there and I'm listening to them teach me. It's actually a class setting. And so I'm just not in the actual class. I never have taken, I've never stood before people without doing my research first, right. making sure that when I'm preaching is in its proper context. I would read commentaries yeah. before I go and preach or teach anything because I do want to make sure that's, that's the reason why I did so much studying was because I wanted to make sure that I accurately depicted the true gospel. And I also want to add this, and not knocking what you said. No, no, definitely. Um, how I, I would. I, I, <laughs> I don't mind me. I, I just run out of control. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, I'll, I'll tell you this, though. Um, there's been a lot of times, and, and, and you know, I praise God for the people I've been able to reach, mm. but there was a lot of times where I would. I would 
be discouraged because I would say, hmm, maybe I'm not capable to do this because I have no seminary background or, you know, I really haven't gone yeah. to school. And honestly, every time I would have these type of thoughts, I would be encouraged by the fruit that's being born mm -hmm. out of these young men and women's lives. Like they're being totally transformed. And look, this is for God's glory, mm -hmm. but they know stuff about scripture more than people that have been serving the Lord for 10, 15, 20 years. That's awesome. Because they're going to churches that don't teach this. So a lot of these people are like, man, you know, this pastor, yeah, he went to, yeah, but he's not really teaching me nothing. I come here to your living room. Why and do I feel you think like, that is? I, again, I, I just don't think that a lot of churches, and not, you know, I don't want to knock anybody, but the truth is a lot of churches are not geared towards really teaching solid theology. It's more like... But why is it? I, I don't, I, I, maybe because they feel, I, I, from what I get, a lot of people, I, I feel like a lot of people feel like maybe they're not going to um, reach as many people with the theology or it's going to turn a lot of people away. Because um, a lot of, you know, a lot of pastors, from what I've seen, they want big congregations. Numbers. They want numbers. And so teaching theology, teaching what sin really is, the consequences of it, being Christ-centered in your message, maybe it will bore some people, you know what I mean? Or maybe Absolutely. people won't feel, yep. you know what I mean? So yep. maybe that's why a lot of these church, or maybe even their background, they just weren't taught. They, 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 they're going, their faith is based on what they were taught when they were young. And they never really went outside of that and really learned proper theology. Now, you, you mentioned that you had your own church kind of thing. It was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, so it was in what, my living room. What made you stop that? And because your first statement initially mm -hmm. was the reason why you did a home mm -hmm. church was because theology wasn't being taught. Right. And, you know, the, in, in churches, you made right. a generalized statement. Exactly. So you started in your living room and now you belong to a church. What made yeah, that, that transition? transition? Yeah. Um, after a year of just... <laughs> After a year of just being, you know, consecrated and just being involved in that and just being there for people, what was also happening though, um, I was being pulled in a lot of in a lot of from a lot of from different directions from a lot of different people, and after a while, um, it just started getting a little like I felt a little drained, and and so it started affecting even my marriage. Um, because I was like, I'm a big people person. I love helping people. Listen, you're going through something. I'm at your house. It's two o'clock in the morning. You even pray with you. I'll be there with you. You know. So I was doing a, a lot of that um, with the people in our church, and I loved them. And it's none of their. It's not their fault. But me personally, I had to take a step back and say, you know what? I need to really focus on my wife, my children. At the time, my wife was pregnant. So, and so I was like, you know, I did my job as far as. You know, grooming them, preaching right. the true gospel, discipling them. I felt like at this point, um, they were ready to, you know, let's go, let's come under. Because look, and I'm not, I'm not trying to say I'm the best teacher or preacher. Or like that. I'm far from that. But a lot of, a lot of the brothers and sisters in the congregation would, would, would say to me, you know, they just felt more comfortable with me because they know my background. They felt like I, it was tangible when I would speak to them. I would break it down in ways where they would right. understand it. But at the same time, I felt like we needed to be under some solid leadership. Um, I was trying to build that in in the in, in our in our group where we had some you know solid leaders or whatnot. But I couldn't force anyone to be in that position, right. you know. So I felt like it was just a wise decision to come under a solid a solid pastor, um, some solid elders, a, 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 a solid church to just come in and, and help serve them and bring the whole team with me. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, and so. you, and you have to, you know, respect that too. Yeah. You have to respect that as well. Yeah. Pastor, Pastor Straker's here. He knows how difficult it is to start up a church. Yeah. You know, it yeah. it might seem seem like very possible on paper, and then yeah. when you try to act yeah. it out, it's like, wait, something's wrong. Like, yeah. it seems so much. I easier have a whole new down. respect for pastors, though. I'll tell you yeah. that right now. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Definitely. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of yeah, work, you know, so. many, many times people are saying, yo, Bert, when are you going to become a pastor of a church? Like, That's not me. <laughs> that is not me. I'll, I'm, I'll be a right hand man, left yeah. hand man, whatever I got to do. Yeah. But, you know, to be to be straight up pastor. No, that's not that's not me. Yeah. I do want to give these because they shouted you out here. OK. Uh, Blaze Torch saying I want to give a shout out to y'all and my man YP is watching the interview, homie and anonymous XI. I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Rapfest Radio. Oh, here's a question for you. Okay. As an MC from New Jersey, who else does YP music 
see generating lot generating great music for the scene growing out of New Jersey? Oh, uh, the artists? Like what artists I see? Yeah. Definitely Anonymous XI. Shout out to my boy. We're part of like the same label. We have like an independent label um, called Community Music. Right. Yeah. So he's part, he's one of the artists on the label. So definitely Anonymous. You know, him and Gennaro. <laughs> him and Gennaro Ortiz got a mixtape um, coming out pretty pretty soon. Hopefully this month or next called Seasons. So definitely Gennaro Ortiz, Anonymous XI coming out of Jersey. Also, my man SOS. He's out of North New Jersey. Uh, he got some fire cooking up right now. Nice. Um, yeah, so them, them three. Um, and, and obvious, you know, the, the, the normals, you know, the Righteous Knights and the Swindy Examples. Right, right, right. You know, Geos. And, you know, they're doing their thing, too. I've seen them grinding. So, you know, shout out to those brothers, too. You know. Good stuff. Yeah. So here's another question. question. Yes. You spoke um, that, you see, I, I, I process everything you say, and then it's like, <laughs> you, you have said that um, in the congregation in your living room, you had, like, gang bangers yeah. and, and you yeah. had drug addicts because yeah. of your background. What is your background? Yeah, well, a lot of a lot of when I, you know I was born in Jersey City, but I was you know my heart is in West New York. It's in Hudson County, and um, yeah, I was known for like I was always fighting. I was just keeping real. I was always in the streets, putting in work. I was the dudes chilling on the corner, just wilding for respect. You know what I mean? Just lost in the sauce, just you know. Smoking my weed, drinking my, my, my beers and my liquor right there on the corner, just kicking it. Just a young kid, knucklehead, chilling with a bunch of other young knuckleheads. And we were just out there wilding, you know? We, we was like really wilding because we was on this episode on the show called Gangland. I don't know if you're familiar with mm -hmm. it. Gangland. And we used to beef with uh, with a rival gang that went by the name of the Trinitarios. They were from like Union City, Jersey City, and New York area. And we were actually on that show because... Um, the the beef was that real, like people were murdered, um, and so yeah, yeah. The background I come from was a very violent background. I was heavily affiliated with gang activity. You know what I'm saying? So what so, got you out of that? Um, several things. I mean, I, <laughs> it's such a long testimony. So I'm trying to condense it. Uh, so my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, um, she I went to Florida for like a year. She came back, totally different person. Um, she she preached the gospel to me. I made fun of her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I tell I told her like, like a nun or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you, know, I had, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I didn't know. Like that's all I knew. You know what I'm saying? Like what's going on here? So I I remember telling her things like <laughs> you know I, I, I remember telling her things like man like I just feel like you you know. It's boring. Like I told her that you know me just being lost and blind. I was just like man you just boring. I feel awkward around you. You know, that's why I told her. I said, you know, you're preaching me all the G stuff. I, I want to get out the car. Because she had just came back from Florida. I finally see her. I'm in the car with her. I'm thinking I'm going to get this old girl back. And it was a whole different person. Um, well, shout out to my baby, Vanessa. I love you. And uh, she's probably watching right now. But, yeah, she, um, she, she was bold about her faith. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She was bold about her faith. And she shared the gospel with me. And so... Um, Little by little, you know, she would she would hang out with me still though, um, cause she, you know she loved me a lot, and so she would still come around. And I remember, you know, little stuff like we'll be watching a movie together, and you know, I'll just hear like whispering. I'm like, what's going on? I look, and she's like praying for me, like stuff like that. I'm like, what are you doing? That's weird. <laughs> I was like, that's weird, what are you doing? She's like, I'm praying for you. And I'm like, we're watching a movie. And uh, she, you know, she was just like so passionate to see me, to see me serve Jesus. And, uh, and so little by little, you know, she invited me to Bible studies, to church. And I remember, um, you want me to keep going? Go ahead, go ahead, like go ahead. No, break, don't, don't worry you know? about it. Right. Go ahead. And then um, she invited me to a couple Bible studies, a couple churches, and you know, in the heat of the moment, we would we would argue because she was frustrated with me because I was being like such a knucklehead. She was like, "I pray that everywhere you go, somebody preaches Jesus to you." You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. And I'm like, "Yeah, whatever." You know what I, mean? I would like just mock her and say the worst things that I can't even share here. But basically, that did happen. Random people just started coming up to me, whether that be on the light rail um, in Jersey. That's like yeah. that little train. It's like you know what I mean. And so on a light rail, on a bus, just random people approaching me, say, hey, look, I just feel led by God to talk to you. I'm like, this is just getting weirder and weirder. <laughs> and um, eventually, I, I remember stepping into the church she was attending at the time, and I saw this one brother, um, my man Chobe. 
If he's tuning in, shout out to my man Chelo. He pretty much discipled me. I remember him for kind of just trapping, you know, drug dealing. And I saw him, he had like a different glow to him. Um, and I asked him, I was like, yo, man, you look good, you know? You were missing some teeth. I see you got them all then. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know? <laughs> he just looked all together, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, yo, man, I found Jesus. And, uh, you know, that, that like, really spoke to me. I'm like, man, I, I, maybe I do need Jesus. Because at this point in my life, I was just tired. I was just tired of having to walk around the streets with, you know, looking over my shoulder. I can't even enjoy a nice day out with my lady because I had so many enemies out there. You know, I was really gung-ho for my block. So when we would go to different territories, I was one of the known guys. I was known in my neighborhood. And so the other gangs and the other street gangs knew me. So they knew when I was around, right. it's going down. You know what I mean? And so I just was tired of living that life, though. You know, I was just like, man, I just want to live a normal life. You know, I don't want to, like, feel like my life is on the line every day. You know what I mean? So, so you, you actually acknowledged that what you were living was not normal. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I was I was stressing and everything. I'm like, man, this ain't normal. That's it. I can't even walk with my girl anywhere at this at this point. You know what I mean? So, so how how do those people? Because you're you're still in Jersey. Still Jersey. You still see a lot of those people. Yep. And I know you said a lot of the gangbangers and stuff would come to your discipleship, but how how were you able to face these guys? that you used to roll with in all the bad scenarios okay. and now preach to them. Yeah, um, so with the dudes, it was crazy because with my group of friends, I'll, I'll start there and the people I bumped into I had okay. problems with. I'll start there, so like my boys that I used to roll with, some of them were very receptive and embraced it. They were happy for me because they knew I was I was going down a ton of fast. Right. I was going to wind up dead or in jail because I was just like a hothead, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then some of my other friends that were heavy into the gang life, they were mad at me. They were like, yo, you going to forget who your real family is? Like, they, they brainwashing you over there, bro. Right. We your real family. I don't know one time being drove, I was driving, the dudes who were like discipling me had me in the back seat and we drove through my block. And one of my dudes tried to open the door like, yo, heck, what are you doing? Make it out of there. Like, try to take me out the car. Because they were, like, watching me like they were losing a soldier. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, uh, and so I was going through that. You know what I mean? Some of my dudes calling me crazy. Yo, like, heck, went nuts, man. He crazy. Talking about God and Jesus, man. He bugging. And so I was getting a lot of that. You know what I mean? So, you know, so, and then some of my other friends were very happy for me. They were like, yo, man, we're we happy for you, bro. Like, we tired of getting the phone calls. I was having to go to this spot because you don't got to do some right. stuff. You know what I mean? And so they were very receptive. Um, my mother at first thought it was crazy. And then she started seeing the transformation. She was like, oh, no, you need to stay there. You know what I mean? Right. So, And then from people that I had problems with, obviously I did bump into people because, like I said, I had a lot of enemies out there. And so... Um, I would actually approach them. Like, let's say they would, like, let's say they won't even see me. Like, there's been situations where there'll be dudes, I would say, 15, 20 deep. And I'm, I know I got problems with these dudes. But I had such a burning in my heart to share with them what I've just witnessed. Cause That's I know, real. Yeah, I know that they've been, I know that they're going through what I went through. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, I would be like, Eep. I call them over. Oh, this, this dude, yo, they're getting ready to rock. You know what I mean? I walk up to them, like, yo. I just want to let y'all know, man, I've been transformed, man. I love Jesus. He transformed me, saved my life. And uh, I want to present this to y'all. And a lot of times, dudes would be taken back, like, confused. Like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I've had dudes like, all right, no doubt. You know what I mean? That's good for you. You know what I'm saying? And just keep it moving. They didn't really try to start nothing. Then I had other dudes where some dude just broke down crying in front of me. Like, yo, man, I want what you have. Wow. I want that. So I've been getting a lot, like I remember being at my man's funeral, one of my closest dudes, my man Mac, they shot him in front of his house. That was one of my best friends. And I remember uh, some of the guys that wanted me to go over there and pray. I was nervous, so I'm like, man, I want to be authentic in my prayer, but at the same time, I don't want to be offensive, you know what I mean? So I wanted to, you know, still... Um, you don't want to condemn Yeah, yeah, crowd. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to condemn, you know, his mom. You know, yeah, yeah. I don't want to feel, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, um, so I said, okay, I'll pray. I was very nervous. I was going through a lot at the moment. I didn't even feel qualified to be praying. I was just going through a lot, you know? And so they asked me to pray. And there was a whole bunch of different gangs at that funeral. Because my man at the time, I was already churching. He was still, you know, gang banging heavy, making a name for himself. At this, at this point, they was playing with guns and all of that. And so... I'm there at the funeral, a whole bunch of different like gangs, uh, different sets, mostly bloods, just different just blood sets or whatnot. And so they were just there. And so 
I was like, all right, cool. This is a good opportunity. Even though I was very nervous and just going through a lot, this is a good, good opportunity to be a light here. So I just went, I went forth and I, and I prayed. And um, I don't know what was being said in that prayer, but afterwards, um, just a whole bunch of dudes, just rough gang banging dudes, walking up to me in tears. Hmm. Like, yo, I want what you have. I want, I want my life to be changed. I want right. Jesus. I want to go to church. You know. So those are like highlights in my life that I look back to in this journey that I could be like, wow, like there's there's people out there that are hurting and they need to they need guys like myself to be out there right. letting them know that there's hope. You know what I mean? And 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 keep and keep going back to that moment in your life because there's a lot of people out there still to this day, you know, that are struggling with maybe gang activity. It may not even show it, which is something like even if we go over a few minutes, don't don't worry about the time. Yeah, cool. But um how is it, you know, a lot of people that don't know the gang life, yeah. you know, like we're talking, oh, you're in a gang, you know, you got to be in that for the rest of your life. And if yeah, you leave yeah. that, they're going to kill you. Blah, blah, right, blah. right. So how does someone who's listening to this podcast right mm -hmm. now, wherever they are, yeah. that might be involved in a gang, how could we give them that assurance that, you know what, you could drop that lifestyle mm -hmm. and it'll be okay? Mm. Yeah, I mean... It just takes it just takes really relying on the Lord that He will protect you. I mean, for me, when I detached myself from that lifestyle, I did it by faith. I'm said I, I literally walked out of my house and I said, Lord, you know, I believe in your divine power and I believe what your word says, so I know you're gonna cover me. Um, and a lot of my other friends who were actually blood affiliated, you see, I represent I represented a street clique um, before I became an official blood member. I was already snatched out. A lot of my friends got banged home. That's what it means when you come home. And so a lot of them are now serving the Lord. Um, well, a couple of them, not a lot of them, a couple of them are now serving the Lord. And um, their testimony has been that too. Just simply, when you encounter these dudes, they do the, they go to do the handshake with you and it's like, nah, you know, it's what's up, man. You know? Like, dude, you forgot? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo, you forgot to do it. It's simple. And, and yo, I joined a new game, man. I bang, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm down with Christ. You know what I'm saying? And that'll be their approach to it. That was my approach. I, yo, I'm down with a new movement, man. I'm, I, you know, it's better for me. It's better for my family. And my soul has been saved. And so it's just being bold about it. And there's been situations, like if I can keep it all the way real, where there's dudes, you know, in the, in the other games that had animosity towards it. Um, even around my way, I know I've heard people, they were, you know, they were feeling some type of way that a lot of the dudes were leaving that and coming around. And I, I just say, like, the Lord will intervene. And his will will be done. And Amen. whatever that is, if he keeps you and you're able to breathe and live and let the world know about your testimony, that, amen, if you get killed over this, then you'll be a martyr for Christ. I mean, that's over-spiritualizing, but it's the truth. Right. You know right. what I mean? You're dying for, you're dying for, yo, know, I, you know. Yeah, that, I mean, and that's, and that's serious stuff. That's serious yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, we just, we pray that if, if there is anybody listening that might be struggling, I mean, you can reach out to us. We'll put you in touch with YP. Yeah, word up. You know, and or seek counsel with people. Look for your local church. Or, you know, Bible teaching church. Yeah. Uh, pray because yeah. you know you don't need any of us to join you to pray. All you mm -hmm. have to do is believe and pray. Yeah, that's right. You know, right. you can do that in, the, in your quiet room by yourself. Word. You know, and and just but just be sincere about it. Say, you know what, I had enough of this. I want to put this behind me and move on. You know, we've done, we've done a lot of uh, prison ministry with the storytellers mm -hmm. and the testimonies you hear from people in prison, like they, they're they done with this life. It's too late. They're serving time, but right. they're done. They don't want to go back, you know, to, to gang life or, or whatever they were doing. And they know for sure their life means more in Christ than it did in the street, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's what you have to, you have to make that decision, like be real and say, you know what, this, this yeah. gang life means nothing, especially nowadays, mm -hmm. you know, like to many people, many people are oblivious to gangs nowadays. Yeah. They feel like don't exist, but yeah. it's still yeah. heavy, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah cause, uh, cause you don't, you don't hear much. It, I guess our world is so messed up right now. There's mm -hmm. so much stuff going on that people yeah. aren't even focusing on that. Yeah. Yeah. There is a huge community, you know, you have that whole fatherless community that, oh, yeah. that yeah. roars towards the gang for that same yeah. reason because it's, it's a family atmosphere yeah. and there's this belonging. And if the church would adapt some of the concept of the gangs, 
of making it a family and making yep. it. Yeah, that that was more. the thing for me. I felt like that was my family, like my boys with my family. I spent more time with them than my own real family. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? And you know that's what that's what I come call like to youth leaders yeah. and and of course. and you know youth pastors and stuff. You know, adopt these kids and and make them feel part of the family. Make them feel like you yeah. know. You know, I'm, I'm, That's right. I'm your family now. That's right. You know, and, and have communication with them and, and, and love on them because yeah. the gangs do that. You know, they make them feel that they belong. They make them feel like they're important. They make them feel like, yo, we got your back no matter what. You know, yeah. if the church, all the youth leaders would take that same mentality and take these young men and, and teach them and pour into them and it becomes more than just a Friday night leader. You're a leader seven days a week, 24-7 to these guys. You know, then and it becomes a different mentality. Yeah, right. And and the churches have to be open to it too. Mm. You know, because we're easy to invite them in, but then when we see them, we get scared. Like, oh no, they actually came. What do I do? <laughs> you know, um, yeah. we a couple of years back at one of our rap fest, the security guards we had were all Latin kings. Mm. You know, they wanted to participate. They were affiliated with the church we were going to. The yeah. pastor there was and still is doing a ministry work with them mm. and you know we, we went to the church and said hey we're gonna do rap fest we're gonna need some help yeah. you know we're gonna need volunteers for vendors blah blah, blah and security <laughs> the guy raised his hand we got you on security all right okay <laughs> we'll be good <laughs> i guess we'll be all right <laughs> is this good? Okay, nobody gonna mess with us that's for sure but all that to say all that to say is that these guys are are they're normal people, yes. you know. Yeah. Just because they they're a part of that lifestyle, mm -hmm. like anybody who's living a lifestyle of sin of any kind, is they're they're human. That's right. They have a heart, they have a soul, and they need God. That's right. You know, and every single one of us. You may not have been in a gang, but you were involved in something else. You're the same as them. You're at a point where there's a void that only God can fill. That's right. You know, so whether you're carrying a gun or you're carrying weed or you're just, you know, living in sin somehow, right. we're all the same. You know, there's no different yeah. level of sin. Naturally, that's a little I, more dangerous yeah. than others. But yeah, yeah. My, can I say? Absolutely. Go yeah, ahead. my bad. Um, that's another thing, too. Like, one thing that I definitely made sure that I was transparent about was my flaws as a human being. I think that's another thing, like, especially guys from our background, they feel like, man, you know, how can this pastor relate to me? Like, this dude is all holy, he's all perfect. How can I relate to this dude? And it's like, maybe if we, as, as the body, just were a little bit more transparent, um, as far as just letting them know, you know what, we're fallible, um, just like you are, you know? We've just been saved by grace. And really, you see this is why I love theology, really explaining what grace is. It's undeserved. You know what I mean? I didn't deserve it. Um, God intervened on my life. He loved me first. And so, just like coming with that approach, getting to the grittiness of the cross, like man, it was just rugged, it was filthy, uh, to cleanse us of our filthiness and our wretchedness. And I think that that's something that has encouraged me to know that there's a God who loves me unconditionally with all of my flaws, with all of my imperfections, yeah. with all of my history, that he's just waiting there for me with open arms to just take me in and love on me and, and mold me to be more like him. You know what I mean? Amen. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome, Amen. man. We pray that God will continue opening doors for you to reach out to these kind of people. Right. Um, and again, if you're listening and you're struggling with gang affiliation or just association with a group of people you know you shouldn't be with, yeah. you know, there is a way out. Right. Just cry out to God. Look for a local church. Hit us up. You could tweet us, Facebook us, mm. email us, whatever. We'll try to lead you in the right direction. doesn't matter what city or country you're in. We'll find a connection for you. Trust mm. me. Uh, because it's important that everybody find Christ. Mm. You know, we're living in some bad, crazy times. Yes. Man. Yes. You know, uh, and if you need a family, it's nothing like a church family, man. That's a church right. family will love on you. We're not perfect. I, I, and that's something I definitely <laughs> want to say. I won't act like I have it all together. Yeah, I'll that's be what I'm saying. As yeah. transparent as I can be to whoever that is. Right. And I'm definitely down to chop it up and just build and pray with somebody. And right, yeah. Walk them through the gospel. We're whatever. definitely not perfect. And we're not yeah. claiming we're perfect. That's but, right. you know, if we can help lead you at least one step exactly. closer to the that's right, right direction, that's right. You know, we'll be a part of that process. Yeah. No questions asked. That's right. Yeah. YP in the building. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, man, uh, it's always a blessing to see you here, man. And, Likewise. And, we're going to go to your proclamation video in a few seconds, cool. but you know, we got to let you spit something. 
Oh, uh, laughing. Right now? Oh, you, you don't have to. Like I say, one announcement. <laughs> Storytellers, the Storytellers will be at Rackfest 2014. Oh, Why well, you think? Why well, you think? Okay. Uh, uh, August 9th, 2014, because Rackfest 2014. It's the 21st year, and we'll be rocking in the streets. We're going to be on 180th Street and Daly Avenue, Vidalia Park. We have a big setup prepared and planned for you guys and for the ministry of this uh, for the streets really you know uh and when we say we're doing this for the streets trust me we're doing it for the streets the hood is bad you know that that neighborhood is really bad the same park we were in last year that's where we're going this year last year we went to the park that saturday we had rap fest that friday a youth uh a member of one of the churches that helped us got shot there right in that same park mm. you know we still we did street ministry in the park with the young people there so it's a it's a tough neighborhood i grew up in the neighborhood so i know for sure it's really bad mm. you know and like you i'm excited to go back to that neighborhood if people yeah, see me in a right. different light that's right you know it wasn't any gang there was no gangs really back then when i was growing up but really well, there was the Mau Mau's, like that, that's that's, oh, that's that. <laughs> what about the Warriors? Oh no, no. Oh, that's that's crazy back there. No, there oh, were, man, but I we forgot. You're that. like 29. Yeah, I'm like 12. <laughs> uh, no, there was um, there was that wasn't our that wasn't our circle. Oh no, we okay, 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 like, okay. We knew them all. They were all local. There was more breakdance crews and stuff. Okay, that was a game. They used to beef dancing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> most of them, most of them. The the rest were just. Mug you. That wasn't even a word back then. We're gonna. It's not jump you or jack you. We're gonna mug you. And they would tell you too. Yeah, we're gonna mug you, kid. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, very polite gangsters. That was the name of the crew. Polite gangsters. Rated PG. Polite gangsters. Oh. Yo. Yeah, um, but seriously. <laughs> August 9th, Rap Fest 2014. We're excited. We have the storyteller. There's Lord's Ambassador, Brother E, Eric E, and myself with a live band on stage. It's going to be crazy. We're gonna, we don't know what we're doing yet, but it's going to be crazy. Uh, every time we get together, it's crazy, us four. Uh, so that, we're excited for that. Also, um, DJ Breakbeat Lou will be there. Graphics by Eric Orr. Put in your submissions. Go to RapFestInc.com. All the details are there. Send them in. If you don't submit, we can't review it. If we can't review it, we can't accept you. We can't accept you. You can't minister. Don't hate us later. I've never you know? submitted to rap. Is that crazy? So what are you waiting for? I need to submit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to submit. I mean, after, you, after, I submit. after all the stuff you told us, we're not putting you in anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no gangster coming to my right now. <laughs> Judgment free zone. Judgment free zone. <laughs> It's okay. I have nothing to do with who gets on anyway, so yeah. we, go. we go. We have a whole committee for that. If you're watching, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. I no, but uh, definitely uh, go to ratfestinc.com. Sending your submissions. Uh, Eric Acevedo was saying he's recently had some uh, gang affiliated people come to his youth group, mm. and they've been coming consistently. So he's discipling them as well. Okay. And he's out in Jersey, so yeah, yeah. South Jersey. Yeah, he's all the way out there. I'm yeah, down. so it happens. We're talking about like linking up anyway. He had oh, told good, me good. Bringing me out there for stuff. sure, for sure. Yeah, and again. You know, uh, pastors, youth leaders, young adult leaders, you know, be very vigilant and wise because a gang member nowadays is not going to go around telling you they're in a gang. Mm. You know, you have to see the signs. Mm. You know, it, I think the saddest thing would be for a active gang member to be a part of a congregation as a visitor or a member and a youth leader not even realize it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's easy to hide, but it's also easy to observe um, yeah. lifestyle patterns yeah. and stuff and I think that's where a lot of youth leaders and, and pastors can fail by failing to observe those signs and just say you know oh, yeah, you got issues oh, there's more yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. so speak to your young people speak to your young adults uh, speak to your, your congregation members find out what's going on you know just because they you know, look a certain way doesn't mean they're okay. Right. You know, right, right. Because that's there's all different levels. Absolutely. Of it, you know, not Absolutely. all of them are in the streets with guns trying yeah. to kill people. Yeah, Some yeah. of them are clean shaven. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So you can't tell. Just yep. you know, don't be afraid to talk about it. I think it's you know, it's there are people in bondage that need to be set free. That's right. That's so, I hope you had enough time to think. <laughs> <laughs> that was more than enough time, right? <laughs> uh, let's see if I can remember all of this. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Yo. The mob deep, we haul like concrete Cause we're part of the elect, so they call us God's sheep I used to hug the block like a blind hooligan Smoking L's, getting bent like it was cool to sin A Jersey, Puerto Rican, born and raised in Hudson County West New York and Jersey City is where you mostly found me But really I was lost with a street mentality Raised in the jungle with fierce brutality I fought for respect, which meant I battled hard But this only led to knives, guns, and 
battle scars. Then we fulfilled the thrill to be killed. The street code is revenge, which means more blood spill. Yeah, I was a goner. The block was like a sauna. A bunch of hot boys acting wild on the corner. The hard clan was ready for war, fam. Had my shirt ripped off in the jungle like Tarzan. Wow. Yeah. Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I remember from that. No, it's not okay. I'm messing with you, bro. Oh, uh, YP, crazy, make, sure, make sure you check him out. YP. Uh, follow him on Twitter, YP Music Live. <laughs> he went from gangster to Tarzan. Just like that. Yo, he was gangster. He, he was more gangster than any gangster. Yo, you had to be gangster. He was in the gangster. jungle with tigers and leopards. Bro. And no shirt. And no shirt. Wilding on the trees. He had his shirt all ready for war. No all shoes. Time. No shoes. Nothing. He had a sash. Like if he won a he beauty was contest. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was, right? Yeah. That's how they put him on TV anyway. He's know? always like nice looking, right? Just yeah, cut up. nice looking. I don't even know if he was cut up. How does he brush his teeth? He don't. He don't have to. His teeth are white, though. He's yeah. screaming all the time. All that air Whoa. coming in his mouth. <laughs> And his hair was never like too long. It was like perfect. No, it's perfect. You know, it just automatically just stops. Just stops. <laughs> That's perfect. You know, people die for that kind of treatment. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's perfection at its best. Tarzan. You heard it here first. <laughs> Tarzan. <laughs> That's for your next song. Don't That's forget. it. We're going to call it Tarzan. Yo, oh, wow. That's very observant. Very observant. You watch too much TV. Oh, wow. Yeah, Do I? Saying. Yeah, I think so. Uh, <laughs> Yo, next week we have Bodega Boy in the building, Seda. Seda. Oh, word? Is, yeah. Shout out to Seda. Seda, uh, he'll be here with us. A lot of people have been asking where Seda, what's he been up to. Tune in next week, Monday from 8 to 9 p.m. Nice. right here, and you'll be able to you know, catch up with Seda. He has some stuff he's doing in the background, ministry and stuff, so we definitely yeah. want to catch up with him. It's been a long time coming uh, to get him back on Rap Fest Radio, so... Make sure you tune in. Let everybody know. Seda will be here next week on Rap Fest Radio. RapFestRadio.com. Word. The proclamation video is about to come on. Yeah. Do I tell them where they can get the menu? Absolutely. Is that like something? Huh? I don't know. Because I know how you are. Like, you pull my card. I'll just, cut it, just... I'll just cut it on the podcast. <laughs> And don't forget, yeah. and don't forget to, uh, the intro right. music comes on. Oh, um, do I do that now? Are we done right now? Yeah, we done. Okay, so I gotta do that now. If you want to do okay. it, you have to yeah, do it I want now. people to get the. Or you want me to play the music and nobody hear it? No, I want to do the, watch the video. So you can basically get the mixtape over. All right, at, thank. You. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. No, go ahead, go ahead. You go. get the, the mixtape over at um, rapzilla.com. The reason why I say rapzilla.com is because when you download it from there, it's actually all in order. So all the other sites like have it out of order. So oh, I hate when that happens. I know, man. Or oh, when somebody gives you a CD and none of the t- none of the songs are yeah. named. Yeah. Right, I'm not naming them. I'm not yeah. listening. So. <laughs> Send me the right files, man. Yeah. Too many. So, uh, the yeah. Proclamation, mixtape hosted by DJ Wado. You can just Google it and you'll find it. YP, a.k.a. Young Paul, The Proclamation, hosted by DJ Wado. Go get it. Yep. Or just hit him up and he'll come to your house deliver it for you. <laughs> it's free, right? So You can pay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, here Yo. we go. Check it out. We're going to go to the video again. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight to Rap Fest Radio, rapfestradio.com. Back next week. Say the man in the building. Peace. Yeah. Hey yo, check this out, right? No one can see God, but Jesus Christ is exactly like Him. He ranks higher than everything that has been made. Through His power, all things were made. Things in heaven and on earth. Things seen and unseen. All powers, authorities, lords and rulers. All things were made through Christ and for Christ. He was there before anything was made. And all things continue yeah. because of Him. Yeah, he was ever sent. The Bible makes it evident that Jesus Christ, the God man, is preeminent, infallible, and benevolent. He's excellent, redemptive in his nature. Now in heaven, I'm a resident. There's nothing higher than my Messiah, the sanctifier. All you other gods in the line of fire behind retire. I'm a writer, the truth requires a truth igniter. All satanic rappers are voodoo writers and the vipers. Like John the Baptist, we ready to get beheaded for preaching the gospel message that Jesus was resurrected. The land was neglected, the Romans killed and rejected They were hostile to the gospel, so Jesus wasn't accepted See a man torn, when you see this man born Now you see this man mourn, God's spirit transformed The God in me is honesty, moving prodigy, prophecy The poverty, democracy, causing people to cop a plea And he is the head of the body, which is the church Everything comes from Christ He is the first one who was raised from the dead So in all things, Jesus has first place 
God was pleased for all himself to live in Christ And through Christ God has brought all things back to himself again Things on earth and things in heaven God has made peace through the blood of Christ Jesus gets the glory to the highest magnitude He was exactly like the Father Displaying all of his attributes His answers all the questions of his death and resurrection They are equal in essence So through Jesus there is redemption We back with no illusion Cause the facts are not confusing Jesus fully man and God The hypostatic union His deity is divine The immortal con On earth Christ was man and God At the same time And by his Holy Spirit I've been regenerated And through the crucifixion and I've been reconciliated Amen. Back to the Father in heaven I've been predestined no longer in this deception The blessing of intercession hey. Resurrection what? You can hear it through the message And it's only by the grace of God I'm here, my heart is wretched Great deception When we play in fake aggression I'm a Christian and I'm fallible There's tension when I fake depression yeah. And since I was raised from the dead with Christ I now aim at what is in heaven Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God I think only about the things in heaven and not the things on earth Cause my old sinful self has died And my new life is now kept with Christ Christ is my life And when he comes again, I will share in his glory